that's on your television tonight and we're asking the old age question where is God when it really hurts there are tornadoes and hurricanes and all sorts of traumas 9-11 the Holocaust the enslavement of black people across the Atlantic they came to the Caribbean to work in the hot Sun where was God in all of this Thousands of them died on the journey. And even in Antigua and Barbuda and across the world today, it's so much trouble. And yet, Pastor Windrove Spencer is telling me that God is here among us in spite of everything that is happening. I want to hear what else he's going to say tonight because I know some people are not convinced that God is with us. I hope that this show tonight will help you to come to a place of realization that whatever happens in our lives, Jehovah God is right there. He never leaves us, neither has he forsaken us. Stay with us on The Paula Show. We'll be right back. It's important that I set context because these things do not just happen in a vacuum. It all started way back there in the Garden of Eden. It's a system that God had set up. And based on that system and man's response to the system, many of the questions and the things we are confronted with today are basically the result of it. So what's the relationship between a child committing suicide and Adam and Eve and the serpent? Well, basically that's it. <laughs> You, you, you have hit it on the head. God placed Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve, basically, yes, they were real people, mm -hmm. but they were also represented principles for life. And so the big principle there was obey God. God, he, he's the one who built the system. Now, you spoke about the serpent. That serpent was placed in the system by God. He did not create himself. He was created by God. And so the serpent was not the problem. What happened? God created a system where man was given a choice. But for man to choose, there had to be more than one. So and so the... <laughs> so, Pastor, I understand all yes. that. So, someone committing suicide, it goes... He had a choice as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Based on the choices Adam made... The entire universe was plunged into darkness and sin. Oh, and right. So someone is terminally ill. Yes. All death. those things are as a result of the fall of man. And so disease, sickness, or you know, all these things came about because of the fall of man. So Adam and Eve sinned yeah. and they fell. Yeah. So are we going to be punished forever with illnesses and loneliness and suicide and all of that? It, I, I would not call it punishment. What it's a it? consequence. But then remember, Paula, that God created a, another way to bring us back. You see, one of the things I would like to highlight now is a principle that we refer to as representation. Adam represented all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so when he sinned, all sinned. That's a principle we read in the Bible. Christ Jesus represented also mm -hmm. all of humanity. And when he lived a sinless life and obeyed God in every way, he was able to redeem mankind from sin. And once we come into Christ, the curse and all these issues will be removed. What do you say to someone who asks you, where was God when my loving parent died? 
Now, remember, death came about because of Adam's fall so, and Adam's sin. But and so at that all, point, you can't tell a person that. Yeah, but the reality is all will and must die. It's the reality. And so people, you see, one of the things, and I find that there is a fear of death. When the Bible says, for the believer, oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death has gone. You're not Let afraid me, of dying? I'm not afraid of dying. Is I am prepared to die this very moment because, you see, Paul, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, and let's do a survey. Yeah. Let's do a survey. How many persons here are willing to die tonight if you have to? Ah, <laughs> oh, Pastor. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and I understand why. You see, Paula, in the scriptures, there are more death. Notice I didn't raise my hand. More, <laughs> more than yeah. one death. Yeah. The death you are referring to is physical death. Yes. But once you have overcome spiritual death, because that is mm -hmm. the, the most important and the, mm -hmm. mo the death we should be afraid of. You see, when God said to Adam, the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. Notice that's what he said, the day he ate, he will die. So the day he ate, he died. Mm -hmm. But that death was not physical because he lived on for hundreds of years. But he died spiritually, which is disconnection from God. Now, once you have over, once you come into Christ, you have overcome spiritual death and you are now reconnected to God. And so physical death, it is just separation from the body, but then your spirit is still alive. And guess what? Corinthians tells us that God has made, he himself has made a beautiful house for our spirits. So when we put off this tent, we will take up that. And it's something that happens instantaneously. I understand that, Pastor, but I'm still at the question, where is God when bad things happen to people? And Do you think that he deliberately create bad situations sometimes in our lives for a purpose, for a particular purpose? There are several answers to that question. Okay. One, you see, remember, there was a, 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 a tree, the knowledge of good and evil, and lots of things that we call bad how did we come up with that definition of badness? Pastor, Be death is bad. Death is not bad. Illness is bad. Illness, come on. Okay, look at Job, Paula. I don't. Look at Job. It was at a bad situation. The, uh, it turned no, out well, God, but it was a bad situation. No, God was actually boasting on Job, you know. That was the good part, but... Uh, no, and so no, that was the good part. But no, it it was bad because no, his he wife, was but his wife, remember, he threatened the relationship with yeah, him and his wife. His children because died because you see, his wife was operating based on emotions rather than principles. Job was based on <laughs> principle, and so the physical pain and the physical loss didn't mean much to Job because he understood divine purpose. He understood that God was in the midst of these things, and inside of the seemingly bad, hmm. he is working things out for his good. So we are expected to behave like Job? Definitely. Job is a pattern for us. You see, all these things are patterns for us. They are patterns, Paul. And you see, the Bible is filled with patterns. And one of our problems is we have decided that anything favorable is good and unfavorable bad. But that's but how we were cultured. That's how we were cultured. And that's but how they that's teach not us in the, churches. That, huh? That, that may be so Paul, but once you get sight and understanding, that's why notice the tree, they were not to eat from the one of knowledge of good and evil. God never wanted us to determine what's good or what is evil. That determination is him. I can give you many instances in scripture of things that we would say may be good when to God it's different and things that we may think evil. Now, let me give you a few examples. There's a, there's a situation in the Bible where a guy, this was happening actually in heaven. There is this meeting in heaven and- Okay, pastor, 
I see you getting all passionate. So we are going to return to the meeting in heaven right after this commercial break. Stay with us on the Paula Show. <laughs> Tonight on the Paula Show, we are asking the question, where is God when it hurts? And at the end of the last break, we were on our way to a conversation in heaven. And Pastor Wingrove Spencer from the Precision Center is here. It's always a pleasure to have him on the Paula Show. What are your thoughts? <laughs> so you were just about to tell us about a conversation in heaven. And remember the context of that conversation is what is good from what is bad, right, based on our discussion this evening. Yes. And so here we had a situation that God wanted someone to do something in the earth. And he's having this discussion, this interaction, and persons, one saying one thing, one saying another. Then the Bible says, this guy got up a spirit and he said, look, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And God said, yes, you got the job. Now, this is happening in heaven. That's what I'm saying, Paula, our theology and lots of things that we call evil. You see, once it fits into the purpose of God, who can determine whether it's good or evil? Similarly, look at a young lady like Rahab. She was a prostitute known prostitute, but she fitted into the purposes of God, and she's actually in the lineage of Christ. Jesus Christ. And Tell me if you think this is good or bad. Yes. So after many miscarriages, uh -huh. a lady finally has a child, yes. and then the child suddenly dies. There's some purpose behind it, Paula. You see, we are not able but to... But due to her age yes. and health compli uh, complications, she cannot conceive again. Yes. That's, that's a good purpose, Pastor. You, find good. you see, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, unless you understand the context and what, you have to see it from heaven's position. From earth position, it makes no sense. Well, maybe I'm still at the earth position and on yes, this one, I Pastor, understand because that. And I, I don't okay, understand how burying I'm, I'm, a child I'm is a good no, thing. I'm saying no, I agree with you. From a, an earth position, well, I agree with you. But, <laughs> But my responsibility is to assist us to see from heaven's position. So there's a purpose in that. There is a purpose in that. Everything has purpose. Every animal on earth, everything on earth has purpose. The Bible tells us that. Uh, yeah, well, that's true. That's true. But, but Paula, aren't you afraid of frogs? Aren't no, you afraid, I'm not afraid of frogs. Are you afraid of lizards? No, are I'm you afraid a of girl. Well, you are. But most ladies... I'm afraid of dogs. Okay, fair enough. And didn't God create dogs? Where you are you going with this? That everything <laughs> has purpose. Everything has Paula, purpose. Paula, if you were given the job that Noah had to decide what animals go into the ark... The would dogs you... wouldn't make it. <laughs> Seriously, the dogs would not make it. And what the other animal? And I'm sure if you do a survey with the audience, half of those animals that we call, you know, certain animals would not be in. I know persons they would say definitely spiders would not be in. Uh, cockroaches would not be in. Do you know they were all? Come on, so you notice that Noah and whoever else was responsible, they had to look above their personal preferences okay, so, and do so what they were spirit so they, filled. from heaven's position. And Let's that's talk our about problem. This one. We look at too many things from an earth base rather than a heaven base. I'm looking at this from a spiritual perspective. Yes. So I'm praying and praying and praying for a child. Yes, like Hannah. Like Hannah, and yeah. it didn't happen. But uh -huh. I'm reading the Bible, and I notice it happened for Hannah. Uh -huh. And I'm hoping that God would find grace and favor in me yes. and do a Hannah within me. Uh -huh. It has not happened. Yes. I'm not supposed to be hurt, Pastor. If he did it for Hannah, why he can't do and it for me? And that's what I'm saying. From an earth-based position, it would hurt. And we understand that. And I'm not in any way saying that we should not be. Don't, it, it, hurt for, it hurt Job immensely. And he actually cried out. And, you know, but then guess what? At the latter end, Job got sight of what God was after. And do you know what Job said? He said, I heard of you with the hearing of my ears. So now but now see. my eyes see you. And I repent. 
So, so he actually, and when you look in all this, Job sinned not. So he didn't sin yet. He's repenting because he had a, I'm a saying greater like Satan, sight of God. There was a hedge around him. Huh? No, but God had lowered the hedge. Yeah, but the hedge was still there. No, it was lowered. It was a totally removed. Uh, uh, it was lowered, it was but it wasn't lowered. totally. The I only... want the Lord to raise the Paula, hedge. please don't call for that. No, not on me. Oh, on <laughs> <laughs> But I you are not the... ready yet. You see, for you, for God to do that, you have got to be. Remember, Job, the Bible actually said he was the only one on earth of his kind. The guy got to a place where God is the one who initiated discussion with Satan, you know. It's God who said, have you considered Job? You see, that's He's the kind blameless. of thing that caused uh, uh, Christians not to want God to have conversations about them. Why? <laughs> You see the Have level you of seen Paula, my the servant the, Paula? The, one of the problems with us, the level of our Christianity is just about getting to heaven rather than actually representing God in the earth. That's who we are. Pastor, we, you don't think I'm representing the Lord in the we, earth? None of us representing him to the fullness. Like Jesus. Job. And, jo and Jesus also. Jesus represented God it, to the point where he was able to say, one day a few of his, his disciples say, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And you know what Jesus said? Guys, have, have you, you been, been with, with me, me so long, so long yeah. and have not seen the Father? If you see me, you, you have see seen me. him. Now remember, God is spirit, so he's not talking about seeing mm -hmm. physical Jesus. What he's talking about, the mm -hmm. values, the principles, and the standards by which he lived his life. With all due respect, Paula, it is difficult to see those values and standards of Christ in the lives of people. Many people define Christ-likeness by the way you dress and the way you act. When Christ-likeness is a quality walk, the way we conduct our lives before God. Amen. And but I have to ask you this because I have to take him back to hurt because, you know, my people are watching and they're wondering, how do we get relief from the hurt? How is it that the wicked in the earth thrives so much and the humble suffers in a lot of instances? I know you have a Bible story for this one. Too. <laughs> Well, the, the <laughs> where are you going? Because you're not going to heaven with this one. Do you know what Paul actually said? The apostle Paul. He said a lot he of stuff. He was actually excited about suffering for Christ. And you see, we, should Christ suffer and we don't? So we and should. those who will live godly must suffer persecution. Pastor, Blessed are they when men revile you and persecute you and, persecute you and, you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. The Beatitudes. Not, not just falsely, falsely for, for my, my name's sake. sake. Yes. But he went on to say something. He said, you are to rejoice. So yes. Paul, when you are persecuted, what should you be doing? Hallelujah! We'll be right back on the Paula show. <laughs> Stay with us, please. <laughs> Tonight on the Paula Show, the pastor is just hitting me hard with a lot of biblical examples. I wonder what's going to happen in this upcoming segment because I don't think there are any biblical accounts to deal with these issues. Unemployment, you would have gone to university and you would have studied diligently. You returned to Antigua and for years you're just sitting at home. You can't find a job. Consequences. What did that happen to him? Consequences? Yes. Back to Eden? Uh, consequences. Of what? Of the, the of systems. Of studying? No, the systems in place in the nation that you may have returned to. It could be bad government. It could be the economic situation. And because of that, no jobs. There are all sorts of issues at work and at play. And so, you know, these situations will happen. And let me say, do you know, at the back of it is the human heart. That's it. The Bible tells us that in the last days, perilous or hard to deal with times will come. He found something. <laughs> yes, hard to deal so with you, times. So you, you're of the view these are the last days? They are definitely the last days, Paula. Mm -hmm. You can see it clearly on every turn. 
and so hard to deal with times will come. But then the scripture tells us the, re re the reason for the hard to deal with times is because of the hearts of men. And the you see, all systems on earth are uh, they are controlled by men. The greedy political people. By men. I'm just saying greedy people. Okay, and many men are greedy. Okay. Thank you for agreeing with me. Do I get a clap that he and agrees with me? <laughs> and, but, and Jesus actually spoke about that oh, because yes. when he was speaking with his disciples, he told them that you basically cannot serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. And he made it known that the masters are God and money. So you're working hard. Yes. There's a mortgage, the car note, the children in school. Nothing is happening for you. You're using your credit card and you're just digging a deeper hole. Say that and again, digging, digging a deeper hole. One of the but you things, have no choice. Uh, yes, let me explain something. Okay. God clearly takes care of his own. He is a father who takes care of his children. And we not understand he provides seed but pastor, for the soul. Be careful I mean it, because the, they're Christians whose homes are being taken away. I know, their cars are being taken I away. Know, their Paula, children are kicked out of school. Because the Lord may have provided with them with enough resources to buy a car for $25,000 and they go and buy one for 100000 <laughs> The Lord may have provided. Wow. But so you see, it's the, it's the, it's the if decisions. If the Lord says he gives us the best, why would he want to give me a car for 25000 But the best, Paula, you see, best, the best is in, in a context. Particular best is in context. Remember when he gave the talents, one got five, one got three, and one got one. So he gave according to their abilities. So you're, you're the best for five ability would be five. So but what? One, the one with ability for one, the best is one. So best is not based on what we call best. Best is based on your context. I so take the best offense, Pastor, that, is true, that the Lord would want to give Alicia and Kevin a Porsche and give me a bicycle. Paula, do you know, do you know enough money is in the world for every person on the planet to be billionaires? Now, if we were to I believe that. Clap yes. on that because I'm going to be a billionaire. Okay. Let's say, Paula, uh -huh. let's say that the Lord decided, okay, let's bring that type of equalization and give each person his or her billion. Do you know that within a day some of them would be paupers? Well, you can see that from the lottos. They win and a that's lot what of I'm money saying. and it's then human choices. You so see, one second, you Pastor, see. you're going someplace. So if the Lord deems me unfit to manage billions. Yeah, you can only manage one. He's not going to give you He's five. not going to give me billions. No. He's going to probably give me hundreds. He's going to give you how much he knows you can manage. Oh, but Paul, you I did that with your billions. children. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you do that with you believe you are able to manage billions? But let me look. My husband pa will pa help me. Lord, Paula. send the billions, please. Paula. I saw a movie once which I really, you know, it was a very interesting movie. What's that? It was a movie that deals with, in, those day, in that movie, they, there was no money. People were paid by time. Mm. And so you were given time based for you as your salary. Time? Your time to live. And of course, all the rich people have hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And the, the, those who are not very rich and smart, they were given like maybe hours for, for weeks wow. work. And one guy, he came into a hundred years of time. And he went and gave 10 of those years to a friend of his. And he left. When he came back looking for the friend, the friend was dead. The wife explained, the boy got so much time that he went drinking and died from. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't value the time. That's the issue. The, uh -huh. the problem is who, the choices we make and based on our choices. And God understands that and he seeks to, but actually he tries to save us from ourselves. 
some persons, you know, benefits and blessings, they would turn their back on God. Yes, and because of that, you see, if you, we do not understand these things, life would look unfair. Pastor, I'm looking at billionaires, potential uh, billionaires. True. I'm asking you, I'm looking at potential billionaires. If, the, if it was ordained to be so and they can manage it. If getting a billion would keep them away from God, I prefer they to, them to be paupers. Y'all want to be paupers? And, and be with God. Remember, that's what Jesus said. I'm just asking because he's speaking on behalf of the people and to say what he would like. So I'm asking you guys. I would like to, to remain with God and... and, and, and a, if, if you have the capacity... And not take If you have billion, the capacity for billions... But I would, and, and I would billion, negotiate like and Moses. Bill, and billions were ordained for you. Get your billions. There's not... Nothing is wrong with witches, you know. Not one thing. Nothing is wrong with witches. I want but to be rich. But you know, the Bible tells us, if witches increase, set not your heart on them. That's the issue, the human heart.